again and welcome to Match Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And where are we? A it's third of the way through March. Is that fair? Maybe a quarter? Uh, today's the eighth, right? Eight times. So, so quarter. yeah, okay, we're kind generous. of in the, yeah. By the time you see this, maybe it'll be. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we did get a lot of snow last weekend, but it is winter and we're supposed to get snow. I posted a picture on Facebook that I shared from something else. I'm like, I don't want to hear about New Englanders and their weather and everything because they do have a little weirdness. I don't know, whatever. California, um, I think it's called Mammoth Mammoth Lakes, California. So like across from Sacramento, mid mid inland, so Melanie, yeah. 500 inches of snow this year. They wow. showed the snow bank. It's like two stories. Like I'm like that, I can't even fathom. Wow. So I mean, we don't, I think I want to say that year we had that crazy blizzard, probably 2008. Hmm. Uh, here in New Hampshire, I know that the, uh, some of the houses, like up in yeah. Vermont and stuff, people were doing backflips yeah. off their this roof was, into the. the you know, I mean, I just and I saw guess it California about, is getting more precipitation this week. Like. Well, you know. And so, hey, you know, but I mean, people carry on like New England's like, oh, we're like in the tundra or something. We're not. No, no. Um, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, so. I like snow days. I'm I down. I like snow. I'm I, down. Snow's fine. And we need the snow for the spring. Like, I was actually thinking we might not have a, had enough snow to provide the amount of water we need. I for don't the know. Spring. I've been down at the Piscataway it's and full. It's, it's like flowing. Right, yeah, but I was is like, that, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's North Country. Yeah. It melts. It comes yeah. down. Anyway, we're that is part of the beauty and charm of New Hampshire. Yeah. We have enough water. We have enough trees, you know, yeah. and if you like turnips, we can even make it through the zombie apocalypse. Um, <laughs> So I started to respond to something on Facebook the other day, and then I stopped myself because I thought, you know what, this is something we should just talk about on the show. So on the 6th, which you're telling me would only have been two days ago, but I had the flu over the weekend, so my days are all out of whack. I thought I read this last week, but this what? says March 6th. So on I'm March 6th, there was an op-ed in the Union Leader by this girl named Alexa Carpenter. Um, and we'll come back to Alexa in a second. And I pulled out a couple bits of it, and it, one of the things it says is, according to a recent St. Anselm College poll, two-thirds of New Hampshire voters agree that their community needs more affordable housing. Considering the Granite State is short 20,000 units needed to balance the market, this finding should not come as a shock. However, what is shocking is how much the other third limits development across the state. And she goes on to say, decisions are made by those who show up and typically those who show up to project approvals to project approvals are homeowners who refuse changes to their neighborhood's status quo. And she also goes on to say, research from Katherine Einstein, a Boston University political science professor. I may change my last name to Einstein. Found that those who show up are privileged, whiter, older homeowners, or older homeowners who also overwhelmingly oppose development with only 15% who showed support. And this crowd has no problem influencing decisions that impact the wider community. And I read this op-ed and I had like all these bifurcated thoughts. Like <laughs> which one is annoying me more? Well, I'll tell you, I also read and I will tell you the first one that I took a kick out of is that we're short 20,000 housing units. And I was like, well, Are actually we? it's only 14,000 because well, 6,000 free staters already have well, homes. It, uh -huh. <laughs> right, so that was one thing. Are we really, do we really have a housing shortage? Well, I, and I thought, like, literally, are I mean, we, we? I think okay. we do. I, do too, I, I like, Because but, okay. based on sort of prices, supply and right. demand, I mean, I hear from people who want to move to New Hampshire they all can't. the time yeah. who are saying, you know, there's, there's really not. A lot to choose from. Yeah. There's, right, so that was one vein. Like, do we really? Because you're always hearing from people that rents are too high. So that was another vein. <laughs> Damn, are, rent's too high. Are the rents too high? Um, so my first thought, and I tried to bolt this, uh, this survey, which was from last June. So I think it's funny that it's a recent survey, and it's like you know 15 months ago. Um, surveyed 100 and, 1, 1,171 people, which really isn't a lot of people. No. So let's keep that in mind. Um, it does, it just asks those basic questions, you know, like, yes, it's like, should we have better education? Yes. <laughs> should your taxes double to get there? No. no. But they never asked that second right. question. They never asked if any of these participants thought taxpayers should subsidize this more affordable housing. Right. So 
I always look at polls with a you know grain of salt. Um, interesting, this po- the article on this poll information. Um, there's co- quotes from Jason Sorens because oh, he was involved. Uh, he okay. was working at St. A's at the time, so it was interesting. Right. So I'm like, it just makes you have. You always have to stop and think. Well, what was the question? Who was asked? What other questions were asked? Are you telling me all the results? Right. Right. And and I mean, let's just parse through affordable housing oh. and zoning for a second okay. because the reason housing is so expensive is, is because of zoning and the regulatory nonsense over here because the troll freaks are like we think we own your property okay we'll come back to that so my second bull it's my second bifurcation of annoyance um yes and i'm going to read some of this because i was like yes People who own properties do tend to be more involved locally. Which makes sense because you live in the neighborhood, you own the property, you're invested. You invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in a property in a community. Right. Of course you're going to be more invested in making its decisions. Um, You know, that's your money that you invested. It's not the government's money. It's not your neighbor's money. It is your money. Homeowners tend to stay in the community much longer. I tried to be objective, thinking of my own self. All, almost every one of us has been a renter. I have been a renter in six different communities, mm-hmm. none of which I had a vested interest in, other than Manchester, right. where I, I have been a homeowner twice in the same community. So I literally, by oh, definition, side de- have a vested interest in Manchester, and obviously I am going to be more involved. It should be no surprise to younger people or renters that this is the case, right? This is not a new thing. It's always been this way to stop hating on us for it. Um, Another thought, New Hampshire is generally a rural state. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. We are not a metropolis. No, I mean, the biggest city is- Manchester is the biggest city. 120,000 people. And by definition, it's a small city. City and Nashua Um, and Concord, although they're cities- They're itty bitties. They're small. So we have, I think we have a shortage because there are more people wanting to rent than we have units. Not about, necessarily about price. There's literally not enough houses for the people who want to live here. Now, we could argue, why do you want to live here if you can't find, you know, like. Right, but also supply and demand says that if there's more of stuff, the price goes down. I agree. So the price right now may be elevated, but the elevated price is a result of the shortage. But is it elevated? So, well, arguably. Um, and, and I'm not no, sure. I'm just no, saying, I'm, I'm, that was my next question. Like, well, is it elevated? So I started doing some digging. Okay. Here in New Hampshire, in the New, H- New Hampshire e- area, the average rent in Manchester is $1,795. Fine. That's for a two bedroom, if I'm not mistaken. Whatever. Okay. Nashua's average rent is 1963 so no Well, more. that's all taxes. Right, right but I'm just saying. Because that's what you get. Lowell is 2087. Government. Beverly, Mass, 2450. Lawrence, Mass, 1924. Uh, Portsmouth, 2000. So all above Manchester. The ones that, on this particular chart that are lower, Dover's only 1500. Oh. Uh, Fitchburg's about 1500. Lemonster's about 1500. So I'm like, okay. But it was ironic when I looked at Dover, yeah, that Dover actually has does surprise me. Fi- at li- uh, more single-family homes than rent than rentable unit. Oh, which makes me think they're probably more conservative when it comes to local spending. Right. But I'm just saying. So their rents tend right. to be lower. Be- but it's not like. So then I even went a little further. Okay, let's think outside the box. So I went and looked at um, the rent in Albany, New York. Okay. Same size apartment as Manchester. Manchester, seventeen ninety five. Albany, New York, fifteen forty five. So really not significantly cheaper. But in Albany, New York, you're paying sales tax, income tax, right? Yep. Uh, my hometown, which is like you know this big, uh, is still nine hundred fifty dollars. Which I don't know why anybody <laughs> would pay nine hundred fifty dollars to live there. Um, Providence, Rhode Island, twenty three hundred and forty three dollars. So significantly higher. Lowell, Mass, tw- tw- almost twenty one hundred. So. So you have to go, wait, so are we overpriced or is this just what the cost well, of housing is? Sure. And, right? And, and I mean, 
overpriced in terms of like a Yankee budget, right? Like if if right. uh, if things go up fast, people hear, you know, we're frugal as as a, well, as and a they've people. Blown up so people are like, what? Something went up by two hundred dollars. Screw that. So you know? that made me wonder. Okay, so they're saying we need twenty thousand unit, and you're always hearing about over the price, right? So I said, okay, how much does New Hampshire grow? Like, do we grow that fast? So from 2018 to 2019, New Hampshire population increased 0.42%, so a little under a half. From 2019 to 2020, so the beginning of COVID, when everybody fled to New Hampshire, mm -hmm. we only had a 1.31% increase. Okay. 20 to, 20 to 21, 0.65, 21 to 22, 0.56. So okay, we aren't having crazy growth, right? So I'm like, okay, so we should need... So then I looked, Department of um, Business and Economic Affairs sta states that 2021 saw an 11% increase in building permits issued statewide. Okay, so that's good. So 11% increase, oh, but we only have like a half a percent increase in population, right? So already think about that. The slight decrease in single family units was offset by a 35% increase in permits for multifamily. So we're building more multifamily than we are built so I mean home. I I would posit also that we probably are going to have to follow the money because when you talk about so, affordable housing so. that is a little keyword for well, some communists coming well, in, in <laughs> so I started then I started and they they inter, they intermix the word wor workforce and affordable so I looked up what is the definition of workforce housing and what comes back is a affordable housing definition, but whatever. Under the law, a home is considered affordable to a household if 30% or less of the household's income is spent on housing costs. Workforce housing is housing that is affordable to a family earning 100% of the median income for the area. And I'm like, there's so many words there that don't, don't always mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I looked. Okay. What is the median individual income in New Hampshire? Not average. And this is across New Hampshire. It's $37,000. Okay. Median, which means there's just as many people work higher and, and lower. lower. If you do 30% of that, that's $925 a month. Okay. For a single person. So that is, is for, for affordable that, that housing. That would be affordable housing. So you would be able to rent a one bedroom apartment for that, right? Because we were looking at- You could at be a roommate for that. Okay, and a two and so bedroom, that's affordable, right? 18. Right? Yeah, okay. The median household income across the state is 88,841, give or take. It depends on which one you see. It's about eight, it's 88,000-ish. 30% of that is over $2,200 a month. Okay. So I'm confused again. Where is the gap? So I did look, because I was like, wait a minute. So the gap is that this is buzzwords and language right. for wealth transfers so then, from us, the taxpayers, to... I looked up while I was is. waiting in the car before coming in here. The average, which is not the median, annual income in New Hampshire is $108,000. The median annual income is 83000 whether people want to realize that. Now, in Manchester, the, the median household income is only 56000 and change. We are 185th in income out of the 235 communities. Oh, wow. So we are a poor community. If you look at everybody below us, it's gorgeous. Not if went. you look at the city budget and how much they want to spend on the schools. So then you have to ask, <laughs> is this the goal of Manchester to create more, to attract more lower income people or to attract higher end people? Because the more lower income neighborhoods, the more poverty, the more resources that need are needed, the more, the more, the more, the more everybody else at the top goes away. Yeah. And then there, who's going to be left to pay? I can tell you who's <laughs> going to be left to pay for Manchester is Bedford and Portsmouth, which doesn't seem right. Right. Or the last of the property owners in um, the city desperately picking up people's litter and trash. So I looked at um, units. So the girl who wrote this article, Alexa Carpenter, she is the... Can we call her a woman or do we have to She's call 24. her? She's 24. Okay, we can call her a woman. We can. 
She is the communication manager of Epping Workforce Housing, and she lives in Manchester. And I thought, oh, I don't know what Epping Workforce Housing. They have a website. It really doesn't say anything about them. It doesn't say what, who funds them or anything beyond that. We'll come back to Alexa. So I did a little search because Epping is trying to build 315-unit development. Londonderry has tons of new condos. Salem has tons of new condos. There's tons. I don't even know how many more apartments there are in Bedford than there were 10 years ago, right? Like a thousand? I don't know. So just in the, the talk in Manchester recently, the new building on Elm Street yep. that I think is now renting is 90 units. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. The West Auburn building project. The one where they're going to allow them the easements to build without windows, but... No, no, no. no. Elm Street no. is the color build, the color oh, building. okay. The one behind Murphy's is supposed to be up to 260 units. Um, the independent order of Oddfellow building on Hanover Street across from the palace is being converted into 43 units. The Pearl Street lot has been approved, if I'm not mistaken, for 275 units. Um, um. The Harnet lot, which is Victory Park lot, that one would have... Um, Another 20, I don't know, another 200 units. 1230 Elm Street, which is the one with no windows, that's another 100 apartments. Wow. So if you add that up, there's 900 units just there. That's just off the top of my head. That's not right. other buildings. That doesn't include any other development. Um, Nashua, if I'm not mistaken, I hope I saved it. Nashua is currently working on 13 projects totaling 1,400 new homes. Um, so we already have like a 20% of her Merrimack, estimated Merrimack, ha, um, there are more than 600 apartments nearing completion, you know. So there are many, 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 many. So I don't know how many organizations we need to keep saying we need more. But it is the buzzword. Everybody, that's why people are saying, yes, we need more affordable housing. Well, it's, it's the buzzword, but you also have to look at the buzzword and then follow the money. So and I, I am very certain I, this I, is, um, this you know, inflationary dollars. So, now back to a little, uh, my friend Alexa here. Okay. This young woman is 24 years old. She works for at least one nonprofit called 603 Forward. Um, on their website, it says, working adults in New Hampshire are in crisis. Everyone we, is in trouble. We need young leaders now more than ever to build a state that includes us all. 603 Forward is building the future by empowering those at the financial, cultural, and civic heart of New Hampshire. Hmm. I went like that. <laughs> Their mission? In tackling the generational crisis facing New Hampshire, I'm gonna stop there. I think the generational crisis is I've worked all my life. Well, because <laughs> in that article, they talk about privileged. I'm sorry, I don't think Dan and I are privileged. I don't think you're privileged. I'm an immigrant from well, Africa. Well, Obviously, no, I'm not privileged. I'm, I'm saying, the biggest victim of all. I don't have, we don't have our home and live our lifestyle because we're privileged. We have what we have because we work for everything we have. Yeah. We make choices to allow us to have the thing. That's not privilege. Yeah. Chris well. Pappas, I would think maybe he'd be more considered privileged. But um, so anyways, in tackling the generational crisis facing New Hampshire, 603 Forward educates, engaged, and activates working age adults. They keep saying that working age adults. There's probably a reason. As opposed to non-working age adults. So, so they have anybody who's not older. No, but it's also, if you parse that, so working age adults. So you're also like, you when what you're the mean? reader, you're like, oh, you're thinking a, a worker. 40s. No, no, but 20, you're also workers. tricking your own mind to, to be like, drive, oh, it sounds like you're a worker. So we but, do this to drive pro next generation public, po ch pub next generation policy change and support like-minded leaders in their pursuit of public office. Whether it's testifying at hearings, engaging with local elected officials, knocking on doors for a young leader, or recruiting the next ge generation to public office, 603 Forward is building a future for our generation to thrive. Um, so, you know, I went looking. If you go to the Secretary of State, because who's 603 Forward? I can mm. see all the pictures of all the people who are employed by 603 Forward. Um, the committee was for There's a 603 Forward Fund because they are a political action committee because they're raising money to influence elections. Okay. Um, the chairperson. So lobbyist. I mean, just for folks back home um, who don't understand Lucas what that Meyer means. Lucas Meyer is the chairperson. He is 
his occupation is he's the principal of Catalyst Ac- Advocacy. Okay. I didn't have ch- a time to dig further into that. And the treasurer is this gentleman's name, Colin Pio. Oddly enough, his occupation and, pr- and place of business, he is a senior advisor to Congressman Chris Pappas. Ha! Ah. But I'm privileged. So ah. this is a, mo- you're being, you're being, there's a smoke screen here. Right. This is not so, people just looking for some sort. We need more. So houses. she's a lobbyist to put an op-ed in the newspaper under a or different organization. Or she works for an op-ed. Right. She doesn't connect directly to 603 Forward. I went and oh, Googled Alexa Carpenter. And Alexa Carpenter comes back as working for 603 Forward. So it wasn't disclosed in the op No, she's communication manager for Ep- Epping Workforce Housing. Oh. So there's something. It just makes me go, see? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that, the only thing that makes me, then they're talking about legislation and stuff. So I did want to touch on this. So this past week, um, there was another op-ed just the other day, yesterday, I think, by a Democrat rep from Nashua, Carrie Spire, who talked about how Um, House Bill 44 was wrong for Manchester, Nashua. Like, no. So HB 44, for those who don't know, reads, um, in the exercise of powers granted under this subdivision, the local legislative body of, and I'm not going to, of a city, town, or county in which there are, it's confusing for people, of a legislative body of a municipality shall allow as a matter of right any single family lot in a residential zoning district served by water, municipal water and sewer, which was amended to say that, to be used for four residential dwelling units. They may be configured in anything like, boom. So even she says, so we're saying. So the that bill just, uh, because that was failed. very confusing. Right, it failed, but was it suggesting that you could put up to four units on your property? Yes. Okay. Without any approval from anybody. So, so, so we a developer would, so, could buy so your house and put up a If four. I'm pro more development, we would like that bill. I No, I don't think, well, uh, now that it's amended to only the places that have municipal water. Right. So all the towns that oh, have- Oh, they're restricting it. They're to, making it na- So smaller. only us, Nashua, Manchester, I Concord, see. who are already densely populated and really don't, we don't have parking. Like she goes on in the article to say- Oh my God, people and they're parking. I'm like, oh, no, but think people about get if you, so obsessed about but the think stupidest about if things. You, think about if you took my Parker Street house and tore it down and put it in four units, where would those people park? There is no parking. I mean, that person would have to figure it out. I'm you know, I lived in New York City and in San Francisco, and there were like but seven but million this is people. In New York City and, and San Francisco, we are a little rural town. You it, could park in that empty parking lot and walk to your building, which is something people in big cities do. I mean, it's like I'm just I don't saying know. we have we require this whole like you have to have two parking lots per apartment building is the dumbest stuff I've heard. I actually have been unable to develop properties because of the parking. I agree that is it is re- it is overly restrictive. However, what having lived on a little tiny street that had one side parking because you couldn't it wasn't wide enough for two, we already had. There were two, the more apartments you put on those properties, everyone brings now not only one. These, these See, here's what I would do. I would build like four little units that are actually on stilts so you could park your car underneath it. That, stairs that go right. up. I mean, I'm you not, could do it. There's, there's ways, a but I'm ways just saying for it. them to say that you don't even have to do that. The town can't tell you you have to accommodate for parking. Um, and only say it's the cities when we're saying the rest of the state that has space doesn't have to do this. We only have, like she was saying in Manchester, we have under an eighth of a of a um, acre requirement with like a six foot setback. Where in towns you have, you know, a fifty foot setback, and you have to have four acres of land. So like, wait a minute, why us? So it did fail. It failed um, two thirty two to one seventeen. It was definitely not a Republican or. Um, Democrat, either way. There were Republicans who voted no not to kill it. Um, there were a lot of Democrats who voted yes to kill I'm it. I'm so confused. Were you for or against this bill? I think I'm against it. Okay. I don't want, I, you bought a very lovely home in a very lovely neighborhood for a reason. I don't think that Brink should build 
for apartments without some sort of input. No, I think that that brings Be up the tension between nimbyism, which we saw with the Parkside um, situation last year, right? Where you're like, nimbyism means not in my backyard. And it makes perfect sense to me. But also we it have to, to be balance reasonable. that with property rights, right? Yep. So if you own the property, you should pretty much which be is why to... I do support what they're trying to do with the planning board or the zoning board to say accessory dwelling units do not have to be attached to your property I 100% support that right. if you've got room behind your house to build a little carriage house or a little home more power to you that doesn't that I don't think is onerous I just don't think every single family homeowner who bought property in a single family neighborhood that was zoned that way should automatically be denied the ability to even question what's going on in their neighborhood. Right. I do, I do also think that the way, and that was kind of how it played out in the end uh, with the Parkside situation, is you should talk to your neighbors. Yep. Like, right? Like, I mean, well, and I, I mean, don't know what's But if we people, lost but. the ability to go before a zoning board and even say, hey, look, we don't have any parking on our street. We're already, people are parking all over the blah, blah, blah. But if you lose that ability, which that law would have taken that away from you, then, then that, they, the same reason we oppose Parkside for them not talking to us first. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a complex issue. It is the reason or the excuse why uh, we have big government. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, zoning so, is a mess. You know, hopefully, it's something that we can start to sort out so by allowing. My takeaway is, I'm not convinced that we need twenty thousand unit more units in in New Hampshire. I'm not convinced we need to fill every speck of property in New Hampshire with a house and a person. Part of the reason almost every person who moved to New Hampshire moved to New Hampshire is because it is a small rural state. We don't have to become Boston. Um, let Boston pack them to the roof. I don't care. Prices don't actually seem to be that high, comparatively speaking. I think a lot of it is just messaging. I think they just keep saying rent is too high. Well, I rent think is too high. There aren't. There's this affordable housing, workforce I think housing. It's the new. It's the new like but buzz, they, right? Okay, we're running just, out of time. It's just here, like folks. when they talk about minimum wage and nobody's making minimum wage in New Hampshire. Right. right. It's so. exactly. It's it's so a there's way don't to, always you got to stop and think and listen and look at the words because there's always more words than you realize. You've always got to stop and think. Yes. Well, and so on, on that, that. <laughs> we're going to leave. Um, we're going to have Victoria Sullivan here with us next week to Fantastic. go over the city budget because that's tons of fun every year. And um, until then, enjoy the weekend. It's supposed to be okay weather. Get out there and you know take a walk in the snow. Spring will be here before you know it. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.